Five dollars used to stretch it for days Robbing niggas trying to cop me some J's Mama said ain't nothing good in these streets Book smart, I was always unique we got most embarrassing moments in the UFC. Now, if you're new to the video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, turn on that post notification bell. And we finna get into it, bro. How y'all day been going so far? They been doing good? All right, all right, back, back, back. We finna get into the video, bro. Y'all boy ready? Make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, turn on that post notification bell so you can notify when I drop another video, bro. And make sure y'all boys follow me on Instagram at kdb.young and notyoungin.kdb because that is not me and that will never be me. We finna get to the video, bro. What's good, my guy? And for today's video, we will be covering the UFC's most embarrassing moments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like. Y'all know I used to be a UFC fighter. I didn't want to tell y'all that, but. Just like any other sport, MMA has its awkward moments. I was a good UFC fighter, too. Mixed martial arts is immense. However, linguistic skills are not Oh, my lord. That is an area in which many fighters are severely lacking. The embarrassing scenarios. But UFC, dang, I ain't gonna lie, bro. As you will find out. Let's get started, shall we? God, let's get started. First up, we have Justine Kish. Who? They missed the fighting off a of choke by Blake Herring at UFC Fight Night 112. Disaster struck for Justine as she kind of, um, let it go. Leaving easily visible brown stains on the octagon mat. Believe it or not, other fighters seemed to take notice at the time, and the fight continued to a At which point, Kish looked down in horror at the mat. When she wanted to flee for the nearest exit, out of sportsmanship, Kish stayed on until after the decision was announced. When she said it felt like an eternity, given her predicament, before finally leaving the octagon. However, despite her nightmare situation, Kish showed a sense of humor afterwards on social media and said, I'm a warrior and I'll never quit. Shit happens. Haha, be back soon. Next bruh. up, Dennis Holman. That's embarrassing, bro. Advertising on YouTube helps Of course I get an ad. Of course, of course. Why wouldn't I get an ad? You know, I always get ads. What's new? When Dennis Holman stepped in the octagon at UFC 133 wearing a disturbingly small flow of Speedos, it wasn't the result of a fashion choice on UFC fighters' behalf. Hallman told Ariel Hawani afterward that he lost a bet, and losing the bet meant they had to go wear some Speedos. As embarrassing as it was for Hallman, it also left him able to only fit two sponsors on the small amount of fabric on the Speedos, costing him a lot of money. However, it got even worse for Hallman when during the fight he suffered a wardrobe malfunction in the midst of the grappling exchange that led to his balls being exposed on live TV. To add to his woes, Dana White was fuming about Hallman's attire, stating afterwards that he was horrified and disgusted. <laughs> By the side of the Speedos, it banned everyone from the following Bruh. soon future. He also revealed that he had given Brian Eversole $70,000 to pay for getting the shorts out the hell TV bonus. After he completed Hallman's humiliation by KOing him later in the first round. Dang. Next up, Rizumar Polaris. After handing Dan Miller a vicious ground up on beat down at UFC 134, Rizumar Polaris got up That's how I used to be. with ferocious intensity. I was a big UFC fighter, but I'm trying to tell y'all. The There's only one problem. At no point had referee Herb Dean given any indication the fight was actually over. With Miller now on his feet ready to continue, Polaris seemed bemused, but had to get back to the business at hand. With the fight resuming and Miller proving he was by no means done as he dropped the Kino soon afterwards. Dang. Before ultimately losing out by decision. Dana White said that is fucking crazy. I never seen anything like this before. Dana White remarked afterwards in no way, shape, or form <clears> did Herb Dean stop that fight or even. Oh, he the up. UFC guy. He didn't even make a move toward them to stop that fight. Next up, I forgot what they called it. Who? But I never heard of some of these fighters, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I heard of some UFC fighters, but not all of them. It just makes you win, so you don't really like to see it. It's not unusual for a fighter to jump around a bit, do a little bit of rubbing after being struck with a low blow. However, oh, you it's got not hit, unusual man. for a fighter to stick their hands down their pants after suffering a low blow, as many of the fans watched Charles doing this. We probably didn't really need to see that, Charles, but we did anyway. It was the most embarrassing moment, not only for Charles, but also for the fans. Probably a lot of them were laughing after seeing mm -hmm. this on TV. What happened next was even more embarrassing. With that same hand without even washing. I doubt Esquerdo was pleased with the idea of being punched by a hand that was just in someone's shorts. Next up, Chuck Liddell. Oh, Chuck Liddell, that's my guy. In his UFC, Chuck Liddell took full advantage of being one of the biggest sports stars and was known to party like a rock <clears> star. <throat> However, that appeared to catch up with him during an infamous and cringeworthy interview on the Good Morning Texas show. Back in 2007, when Liddell was so incoherent, people immediately began to suspect he might be either taking drugs or drunk. <laughs> the show's host began to show concern for how Liddell was acting, asking him if he was okay at one stage as he repeatedly mumbled and slurred his words and even appeared to momentarily fall asleep at one point. The appearance was hugely embarrassing for Liddell, who claimed later he'd overtaken sleep medication, and the UFC, who pulled him for all his other scheduled promotional interviews to avoid any more PR disasters. Next up, Gray Maynard. Wow. Gray who? He would be a powerful slam, a slam that any fighter would love to have on the highlight reel. And Gray Maynard did just that when he hoisted Rob Emerson to the air and brought him back down to earth with a thump at Ultimate Fighter 
He said he brought him back down to earth. There was a catch, though. In the process, Maynard managed to knock himself out, too, as he face planted onto the mat. To make matters worse, Maynard apparently didn't realize what had happened and reacted fiercely with a no contest ruling was declared afterwards, insisting he was an out. That led to Joe Rogan making him watch footage of his embarrassing blunder on the arena big screen multiple times during his post fight interview to prove that he was, in fact, KO'd. Despite his denials, the replay clearly showed Maynard was in a day stupor after the slam, eventually rolling off Emerson and laying with his eyes rolling back up into his head, before Damn. he then loosely tried to get to his knees and fell back onto the mat when he attempted to stand. Next up, Caleb Starnes. Of all the fights that have taken place in the octagon, <laughs> there was one more embarrassing than the time that Starnes well, why are you fighting like that Starnes had a juicy backpedal around the edge of the octagon for 15 minutes against Nate Quarry. The fight left Quarry so bemused that he began hamming it up, pretending to run after Starnes and doing robotic attacks. Much to the amusement of the equally perplexed fans watching his opponent effectively commit career suicide in the cage. Starnes, who mustered a total of 12 strikes during the whole fight, was fired from the UFC afterward, became a figure of ridicule for fans, who nicknamed him the Running Man. White said he just doesn't belong in the UFC, and after his performance the other night, he should consider a new line of work. Next up, Anderson Silva. The Running Silva. Man. Oh, Anderson Silva, I know him too. Anderson Silva's confidence was running high when he stepped in the octagon to fight Chris Weidman for the first time in UFC 162 in 2013. After all that time, he was long-reigning middleweight champion with no less than 10 successful title defenses. Had never been beaten, the UFC was considered by some to be the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. The longer his reign lasted, the more confident and some might even say confident he was really dangerous, bro. And that had produced some priceless moments in the octagon where he would drop his hands, thus opposing his weave. Some of still managed to avoid the incoming punches, leading Joe Rogan to exclaim, Oh my lord. Someone was moving inside the Matrix. However, if you look up by the sword, you die by the sword. And when Chris Weidman went up against him, he showed no respect for Silva's showboating antics. As such, when Silva dropped his hands, stuck out his chin, and mocked the attempts to hit him, even pretending to be hurt in a comical fashion, he just kept on punching until he did finally manage to connect clean to the champion's chin, knocking him out cold in humiliating fashion. Next up, Max That's Holloway. That's some bad That's UFC some bad UFC champion Max Holloway had a challenging weight cut prior to UFC 218 last year that left him to strip down to his birthday suit in order to make the featherweight limit. Standing in front of the assembled media, towels were bought out to protect <clears> blessed modesty as he still onto the scale. But things didn't go quite according to plan. Unfortunately for Holloway, one of the two men holding the towel for him, fellow fighter Justin Gaethje, decided to flip the towel as he stood there, which mistakenly resulted in his man parts being left exposed to the waiting camera. Holloway quickly covered up, and Justin laughed off his blunder. But later, Blessed accidentally also exposed his bare butt as he tried to put his shorts back on again. Next up, David Kaplan. Dave Kaplan has a tough arm to punch him and gets knocked out. Right. Some men just don't know their limits. After excessively bragging about how he couldn't be knocked out, Dave Kaplan begs the ultimate fighter teammate Tom Lawler to punch him in the face. Lawler, on the other hand, took a really awkward at the start, but then thought that no one could ever get a chance to hit both the rival and his bragging at the same time. Damn. Tom will fight three weight classes both days, but ultimately agreed, and then punched Kaplan completely unconscious. He was something that Dave wasn't expecting, so brutal and hard. Probably he thought he would dodge the punch, but ended the opposite. It was a pretty funny thing to watch Bro, the what? Up, but no doubt it was an uncomfortable experience for Lawler. The funniest part was after regaining consciousness, Dave tried to say that he didn't get knocked out, but it was too late, mate. Next up, Gina Carano. When you say he didn't get knocked out, bro, we seen you. Awkward, it was in 4K, what you mean? Waiting. Apart from being generally unprofessional and reading questions off his Blackberry, Ting also makes his interview very embarrassing and uncomfortable by asking a series of inappropriate questions. Here's some samples of Wade's journalistic dynamite. Do you get hit on more or less now that you're famous? Do you wear makeup when you fight? Who do you think <laughs> is the ugliest MMA fighter? Carano does her best to stay composed and answer questions carefully, but it doesn't stop the interview from being more comfortable to watch. Also, the interview is extremely detrimental to the growth of women's MMA, given that all the questions center around gender and appearance. It would be hard for someone unfamiliar yeah. with women's MMA to take it seriously if they were to see only the same. Here we go with the Next helicopters up, flying there, yeah. The first ever event, all the way back in 1993, former kickboxing star Dale Superfoot Wallace served as the lead commentator and delivered some of the most cringe-inducing moments in her sports casting history. From start to finish, Wallace's commentary could qualify as one long, embarrassing moment in which he repeatedly showed his ability to put his super foot in his mouth, but none more so than during his opening monologue. In the space of just a few seconds, Wallace managed to get the UFC's name wrong twice, calling it the Ultimate Fighting Challenge, instead of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. In birth in the middle of saying the name, saying the name of the arena the event was taking place. I want to start playing you up. I want, 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 I want to be a UFC fighter. Roy, interpretations of Gerard Gordeaux and Taylor Tooley's names, while he even bungled the names of his own broadcast Again. reporters. Including failing to ever correctly call Rich Goins by his name, of opting to with Rod and Ron instead. They also invented new words like this combobberates and gave fascinating insights such as pain hurt <clears> and that the fights were taking place in an octagonal octagon. Next up, Damian Maya. I don't Damian know what Maya you just said, my Nate bad. Cor. This is just a case of an unfortunate Damian, who? Nate Corey and Damian Maya hug 
after oh, Brian Daniel, my, 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 my. What happened is Maya intends to kiss Corey on the cheek, but just as he's doing that, Corey turns his head and boom. He was not that type of kiss, but an activity that can be called as a kiss. The end result is two men kissing on the lips, and Nate quickly walks away, seemingly embarrassed by this act. Alright, MMA fans, thank you so much for seeing me. I know you're lying to me, bruh. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. But anyway, bruh, that's going to do it, bruh. If y'all enjoyed that video, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification button. You get notified when I drop another banger, bruh. That last one was wild. I don't know what they were. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm. Anyway, bruh, would you ever be a UFC fighter? You say, yeah, I know. But anyway, bruh, I'm, I'm, I might get back in the UFC ring again. I don't know, bruh. I still got it a little bit. I might get back in the octagon. I mean, the gun, the, whatever you call it. But anyway, bro, I'm finna be out of here, bro. Make sure y'all boys like, share, and subscribe, bro, and I'm gone. Have a reason to cry. Funny movement that I'm torn at nine. I'm hungry, you can see the pain in my eyes. Fifteen, cracker gave me some time. Lost my brother, I was losing my mind. Fake love, left the niggas behind. Buying niggas, shoot the seller.